Hey there stampers, today we're getting jiggy with it. stamp a jiggy with it, to be exact. So I'm gonna show you how to use this tool that is really actually a very, very useful tool. I think everybody should have it. And I think I maybe don't pull it out often enough. So there are two parts to this tool. There's the stamp -a jig stamp positioner, and then there's the imaging sheet. And the imaging sheet is a little bit rough on one side, and on the other side, you can see it's super shiny and super smooth. So what you want to do is line up the corner of your imaging sheet in the corner of your stamp positioner. Now this works right-handed or left-handed. You can do it at the top, you could do it at the bottom. I find it easier just to do it this way. Next thing that you're going to want to do, now you're going to want to make sure the rough side is up. So you're going to ink up your stamp. Okay, you're going to make sure your, your imaging sheet is nice and tight in the corner here and you're going to put your stamp nice and tight in the corner of the stamp positioner. So you can see how mine is nice and tight in the corner. Glide it all the way down against the stamp positioner and lift it directly back up. So you can see I have transferred my image onto my imaging sheet <clears throat> from my stamp. So you're going to want to use a dark colored ink for this. Don't worry, it doesn't stain your imaging sheet. It washes off really, really easily when you're all done. Um, and the other trick, you want to make sure that you always are stamping in the same way. So on this particular stamp, it's a wooden stamp, and so when I um, apply the label, I left the little copyright stampin' up thing on. So I know that that always needs to be in the bottom. So in the bottom corner, that's how I lined mine up. So I cannot now flip it over and do it this way. It won't line up the same. If you're doing it on a clear block, I would recommend that... Um, one of the sides of your block has the letter of the block, A, B, C, D, E, and so on, and the other side says Stampin' Up on it. So you want to make sure that whatever side of the block you have lined up in your stamp positioner is the side of the block that's always lined up in your stamp positioner. Okay, so now let's, let's see how we would transfer that onto paper. So I've already stamped a happy birthday to start with. This particular happy birthday is from the Teeny Tiny Wishes set, which I think is one of my last few wood sets. And I have it stamped on my imaging sheet. Okay, so I'm going to put my imaging sheet down. I am going to um, put my stamp positioner, line it up. Remember we want it nice and tight in the corner. Okay, my imaging sheet gets pushed out of the way. I don't need it for this part. Ink up your stamp. And again, just like that. So it's exactly where I want it. Next step, bring your imaging sheet back. Okay, line it up. Make sure it's nice and tight in the corner. Ink up your stamp. Line it up. Stamp it down. Okay, and you just want to continue going all the way down your sheet. So I'll keep, I'll keep going here. Now sometimes if you have a small piece like this and the stamp positioner um, perhaps is not getting enough of a grip on it, um, I sometimes will use a little bit of snail and just stick it down on my scrap paper so it stays where I want it. Okay, so you can see how we're going all the way down. Like so. And it makes our stamp um, it's nice and lined up. It's exactly where I want it. And it really takes just not that much effort to make it look pretty perfect, hey? This works good if you want to center images on your projects. Um, if you want to line things up in a row nicely. If you want to use different images and line them up. Okay, I'm going to skip a space and I'm going to go up from the bottom now and you'll see why in just a second here. Okay, I'm going to pull this away, ink it up, stamp it down, bring it back. I'm going to do one more on the bottom here. Line it up, ink it up, stamp it down. Well, that one's a little close, whoops. That's okay. So in this little space that we have here, um, we're gonna do something really fun too. So I've already stamped that same happy birthday, but instead of in the Night of Navy, I've stamped it in the Tangelo Twist. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly cut it out. I don't want it to be perfect. I want the edges to be angled and kind of funky looking. Like so. Okay, we're going to mat this on a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock like that. <clears throat> and then again, cut it out again. It doesn't have to be perfect. For this one, I want it to not be perfect. Okay, so I have it cut out like that. And that's going to get stuck right there. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to stick that on with some dimensionals, which I need to reach over to my other side of my desk to grab. Okay, so before I do that though, I'm going to stick this onto my card. So now this, you want to make sure that you put this out of your way so you don't end up with that showing up on your fingers or on your elbows or on your sleeves or on the rest of your project. Okay, and I'm going to bring the rest of my project in so I can finish it up. So what I've already done is I've taken a half sheet of Tangelo Twist cardstock and I have folded it in half. I put a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock and then I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock which I stamped with the Positively Chevron background stamp in Tangelo Twist. I've already applied a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock here which I'm going to mat this with. Okay, so this is going to go down like that and then I have this piece that I'm going to bring back and let's grab a couple dimensionals for the back of it like so all right I want it to be kind of off center and really fun so I have it looking like that so this one pops off the page and then I'm just going to finish up my card with three stars so I have the little star punch here um, and just my scrap of Knight of Navy cardstock again so I have my stars and what I like to do to apply my stars I don't like to use my um, snail adhesive for it I find it's really hard to get it on the back of those little tiny stars so I just put a little dab of Tombow on the back. So I know that they're going to be stuck, but they're still going to have um, a fun little bit of dimension on them because the ends will kind of stick up a little bit. Okay, so one there, one there, and we'll do one right there. There we go. So we're done. We've done a pretty simple little birthday card and you have all your fun little happy birthdays lined up with the help of the Stampamajig. So I hope you've enjoyed getting jiggy with it with me today. Um, have fun using your Stampamajig and if you don't have one, you're gonna wanna order one. A-S-A-P. Have an inspired day.